Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today, and、um, to join with you in another episode of Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zhu Show. This morning,、um, I was just out there on my balcony having coffee, and I watched the birds here in Mexico. There were. So happy, they were flying, they were chasing each other in the sky, doing little dances up and down, dive really fast, and I just feel so happy. I feel that's the lesson spirit would have us learn, just to. Allow ourselves to get in touch with the spirit inside, the joy inside. And then I came back to to my room to get ready for the podcast. And two minutes before、uh, ten ten o'clock, the lawnmower started next door. It was very loud. I don't know whether you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. And、uh, I was just laughing because really, no amount of planning, no amount of、um, preparation, can prevent. Anything in this world, but at the same time, no amount of event, no amount of outcome, no amount of external situation can determine our internal state. Because we don't want to live this life, preventing, planning, preventing for an outcome or aiming for an outcome. I notice that when I live like that, I am actually defending against. An experience that can be offered to me by the spirit. I'm actually using all that I have learned in this world to defend against what this present moment can offer to me. And what this present moment can offer is not something that can be spoken by words. It is an experience. But I know that if 
I use this moment to prevent from to prevent something from happening, or to plan for something to happen. I know that this moment, I give it to the ego. Because the spirit wants to use this moment for his purpose, which is a moment of release. Spirit want us to give this moment to him, so that we can taste the release from everything from this world. And truly, when I give my time over to plan something, to defend something, it is not for release. It is the ego's plan for release. But it's not the kind of release spirit wants to offer. So sometimes, if I found myself start to plan for the future, I would just stop and ask myself, who is the one? Whose plan is it? Who is the one that's planning? Is this the spirit? Is this the spirit's plan that I'm、um, holding in my mind? Is this the spirit's plan? And it is not, because the spirit plan is never about the future. The spirit's plan is given in this moment for this moment. And if it is not the spirit's plan, whose plan is it? If I found myself planning for something in the future, whose plan is it? After I was plan playing, I, I felt like I was playing with the birds, even though I was just watching them. But inside, I felt like I was playing with them and smiling and laughing with them. After that, I I came back to my room and I saw this、um, message came through, and it was. Emily from our center in Spain, who just sent in a a big update about our Living Miracles Center in Spain, and we got that center in two thousand and nineteen. So it's about a year and a half later.、Um, there are a lot of a lot of、uh, logistics that finally come to. A completion, including the completion of some title transfer with the land, with the car, and the center was just got hit by a storm recently, and there's some repair. And also,、um, apparently, the house had some sewage problem, and when they did some. Investigation. They realized that there were sewage that that was that was never emptied for years before we got the house. So 
Eventually, they got the company to come and empty the sewage from the sewage tank, and it was five truck loads of sewage that got taken away. But the message today, this morning, just right before I started this podcast, was just a whole list of things, but. It was the one message is complete, is complete, is complete, is complete, is complete. And I, I was reading it, and I, th- I thought this is exactly what the present moment feels like. All the problems that were in the past, in this present moment. They were all seen as complete. There isn't one anymore. That reminded me of this experience I had when I finished directing the movie "Take Me Home" and took the movie to a professional film studio in Portugal to. Get finalized, and of course, along the way, because we were not professional movie makers, and also our focus wasn't really about the end product. The focus along the way was always around how to use the backdrop of this project to. Learn how to forgive in this moment. How to forgive whatever that rises up when we work together, when we have different opinions, when we were trying to pray and listen to the guidance. So there were many, many seeming technical issues、um, along the way, and then when I. Was first bring this to a professional film studio. I sat there, and this very professional、um, engineer basically spent two hours telling me every single mistake that was made along the way, including the wrong settings of the camera. The wrong settings of different cameras, so that they are not in the same kind of mode when they were filming, and it made it very, very difficult to merge different shots. All kinds of things. But when he was explaining all all those mistakes, he said, "I fixed it. I fixed this. I fixed this." So the end message, after listening to him for two hours, the message was, "It's all fixed." That's one thing that I, I, I got from that session, that f- very first session with him. And I can't describe to you how happy I felt sitting there listening to that. Because I, I knew I could not have done anything different. I could not look back and thinking if only we checked the settings, if only we、uh, did more research. There was no looking back because what the because the focus of that time, the focus of that moment. What was achieved was forgiveness, and in terms of form and in terms of how the outcome looks like, I could not look back and thinking I could have done it differently, and yet. The happy message in that moment was that nothing has gone wrong, and nothing could have gone wrong 
even though you are not focusing on them, even though seemingly this was a mess with、uh, how the technical aspect goes with the shooting. There was no consequence. There was no consequence, even in the level form. And at that point, I already accepted the fact that maybe there wasn't going to be a, an end outcome, a tangible movie, and I was already very content because. Of the healing and the gift that myself and everybody in the team has received, so when I I realized that when the focus was not on the the form outcome, and yet. There, there, there is no consequence. There was a relaxation and a confirmation to me that yes, I don't need to focus on that. I don't need to spend the time. I don't need to spend my life in trying. To get the best form outcome anymore, along the way with making that movie, also one thing was very very clear to me that I learned was that. I cannot hold two goals at the same time, and hoping that I I can get a little bit of both. One goal is the present joy and the present connection with the spirit. One is a future result, a future outcome, an outcome that I can receive. From a product, or from people, or from the world. So there, are, there's these two goals. At any given point along the way, I could choose one, but only one, not two. And if I choose one, I have to let go of the other. That was. So clear to me because I was facing a lot of decisions that I have to make at any given moment, and the decisions would be different depending on the goals that I hold. If I wanted to choose a future outcome, something that would be、um, well received, something that I would be able to get. The kind of satisfaction from the world, then the decision would determine that I would follow a pathway that was already laid out. How to make film? How to make a movie? There, you know, there are a lot of people who. Who know this area and who know how to create a story that is captivating? How to create an arc for the characters? How to make the film more engaging? And I clear, I could clearly see there was one decision, there was one pathway, and all the decision would line up. Because of the goal that I would aim for, once I choose the goal, I choose the decision. I choose the means, because they come together. Or 
The other goal is a present joy. And I can't have both. To have present joy, I have to let go of the future. And when I let go of the future, I let go of past, because when I choose the future, I have to rely on the past to tell me how to generate the future that the world wants、uh, wants us to have. So the present goal, though, is a present joy. And recently, I, I I talked to a friend, and he told me he he recognized that even on this spiritual journey, even while living a very devotional life, he observed that it is much easier or much more habitual to want to lean on. The past or the, the guidelines, something that is external, that is already established, than to go inward, to actually allow himself to tap into this stillness and this this moment that seems to be so mysterious and unknown, and to go there. And ask for present solution. And that was very, very true. Because this world is a defense against this present moment. Any planning is a a defense, so that we don't have to enter a moment with wholly empty hands and wholly empty mind, and allow this moment to reveal itself to us. Something. That we don't already know. And yet, this is the way time can be used. Time can be used. For us to give it to the spirit to reveal, reveal the spirit to us in this moment. That's why, you know, today's workbook lesson of A Course in Miracles is: I will not value what is valueless. I will not value the use of time. That the ego has been using it for, which is for defense. Ego used the time to perpetuate, perpetuate a deception. And the percept deception is so deep, so at the level, at the con- conscious level that we're in touch with on a daily basis, we're not in touch with this deep deception, but we do sometimes feel 
wow, I feel my life is just going through the motions. Every day feels the same. It feels boring. It doesn't have vibrancy. It doesn't have wonder, wonderment. It doesn't feel like there is the spirit in it. In this moment, it's just same old, same old. And that is because, under all the surface events and phenomena, there 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 is a very very deep decision that we're making at every single moment of the day. And Jesus says in a course of miracles, and actually also in this lesson. Lesson one thirty three. He says, "You, you know, whatever you decide, you receive all that comes with this decision. So, when we decide on giving this moment to be used for release." Not our own definition of release, not the ego's plan of release, not a temporary release, but a release from everything that is imprisoning to us. When we really want to give this moment for that purpose, when we turn away from all the past beliefs and learning. And all the planning for this moment to look the way we want it to look. Then this is the moment that we can receive everything. And similarly, if this decision. Un- underneath all the layers of events and situations and judgments, under underneath all of that, if this decision is that I would choose this moment to be the same or to be something that. I can protect this body. I want to use this moment to plan for a future that can give me what I think is the best for me as a body. Then we receive nothing. As an outcome of this decision, absolutely nothing, and in nothing, this is where life can become repetitive, like a Groundhog Day. It feels like it's just the same day over and over again. Not extremely miserable, but definitely nothing that is thrilling either. It's just. Going through the motions, so when we do not try to get anything from this world, when we do not look for this world to get happiness, contentment, joy, self worth, when we choose to. To say, okay, I have seek there for a long time, and if I don't deceive myself anymore, I have to say,、um, it was only disappointment that I found. So I'm willing. I'm willing 
to let it all go. In that I enter this present moment with an open mind, with an open mind that I do not know what this moment would present, and I am here just to receive from only one, from the from the spirit within, not from the world, but from the spirit within. This is where I'm going to receive from. Then this this moment becomes a doorway that we let go of all past and future. When we do not look for. Anything from the past or future from this world, we actually are not going to be disturbed by the past or the future, or the events or people in this world. As long as we're still looking for completion and satisfaction from the world, we would feel disappointed and disturbed by how the events play out and how people are in our lives. So this is a total escape. My mom watched the movie "Take Me Home"、um, a few days ago. And so we had a very、um, deep conversation afterwards. She expressed first a lot of、um, emotions and gratitude for the work, the healing work that David is offering, and. After that, she was asking some very interesting questions, and one of the questions, or the main one, was this very question: Why, when you guys make this movie, you cannot have a future outcome as a goal? Because she see that in the movie.、Um, Soren, who who has a lot of experience and skills, he was there as part of healing to let go of the past knowledge and skills, and to join in the prayer for the present moment. And there was a lot of healing going on with that. And she was wondering why we cannot have. We cannot aim for a future outcome. What is the what is the problem? And in pondering on the question on the call, I actually realized this one question holds all questions, and the answer to that question holds all answers. This question. Is ultimately a question about what is the purpose of this life? What is the purpose of doing anything? What is anything for? And I really like that that realization because I see that in questioning everything, anything leads to the questioning of the core of the ego. 
if we're really, really sincere in any question we hold up in our mind, if we're really sincere about that one question and we really want to know the answer, then we will find the root of the ego. And be able to let it all go. But here, you know, we're ha- we're learning a course in miracles. We're learning from Jesus. We're not really here to just. Be content with get, gaining some intellectual understanding, and to be able to have some kind of dialogue or discussion. This teaching is to be lived, is to be put in practice, is to be put in test. And we can find out what this moment has to offer. If we let go of all the defense to prevent us from entering holy with holy empty hands and holy empty mind into this moment. If we're carrying all the planning. We're carrying all the future outcome, carrying the fear, carrying the past、um, regret. If we're carrying everything into this moment, in blocking us from truly receiving and truly seeing, then we can. At least acknowledge that we still haven't fully let go. We still haven't fully let go, so we haven't truly learned what the spirit is, because we have been in defense mode. But Jesus also says that you do not ask for too much in life; you ask for far too little. And this is true when we talk about planning. We're asking for a future outcome. That is a little safe and to the best capacity as we can imagine, a little joyful. But they're all within the realm of. This world, the sorrow, it's always gain or loss. It's always temporary. We're satisfied with a little temporary release, either at someone else's cost or at something else's cost. It's always a bargain. Can I get a little bit from this world? Can I get a little bit from the relationship we're in? And it doesn't really matter. We we don't know what everything is. 
We don't know what spirit has to offer. All that it takes is for us to be able to say, "This we do not want anymore." This searching in this particular place. What I have received, what I have experienced, is not what I want anymore. And I think that's what Helen Shackman and Bill Thetford did right before A Course in Miracles came. All that they needed was to say that there must be a better way. The way that we、uh, know how to handle these conflicts and those turbulence in the relationships, in the working relationships, just was not good enough anymore. So there must be another way. And I've seen it with my own experience and a lot of people's experiences. Is that The the change and the the true opening happened. Healing happened when they actually started to say or mean something similar. This I do not want anymore. Some version of that and really mean it. Then that was just they laid beside. And the spirit rushes in to offer the miracles. So, take no thought for tomorrow. Is a state of mind that it's very practical. We can truly just relax. And take a leap of faith, asking for another go. Not a goal around things to be done in a better way, or I would not mess up, or things would be not falling apart. My relationship would not fall apart. But we are here to take a leap of faith and ask for a better goal. We dare to ask for a better goal, which is that we're aiming for joy that we can tap into right now, despite of every single perception that we hold in mind. We want to be wrong about how we perceive ourselves. And how we perceive the world, because that perception does not bring any happiness. So we're we're tapping into asking for that goal. So everything I want from this world, I let it go, and I'm asking of you, spirit. I'm asking for a present joy that cannot be disturbed, that always at my reach, whenever I ask. That this joy, this contentment, can never be disturbed by anything. And I want. A goal that I know, without a shadow of doubt, that I am 
still as God created me. And I have never sinned, and I will never sin. And this is what this present moment will show. Will show us. It's not going to be shown through perceptions, but it is inner remembrance. Well, I actually, I'm here with you alone today, and I I'm looking at my computer with my music app. I actually can do a little DJ here and play a song that fits with the vibe right now. So. Let's end today's time together with Eric Archbold. Eric Archbold's song "Just Relax." Just relax and go slow. There's no need to hurry, for there are no monsters chasing you. Well, I don't know why it's not playing for me. Let me try another song. Maybe we are to end this with a joyful realization in mind. Let's try this one.
trust God is in my mind. Wow, Nida Bowen. God is in my mind. And that is what this moment is going to reveal to us. And we shall hold no goal less than that. That's what we want this moment to be. Let it reveal to us that God is in my mind. And I can behold that. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And thank you for all my friends who sent in my te、uh, the text to let me know that actually the song are playing. For some reason, I can't hear. So, thank you for your help. <laughs> And since the song can play. Let's end this episode with Eric Archbold. Just relax, and I will see you next week. Just relax. Go slow. There's no need to hurry, for there are no monsters chasing you. Just be still and let go. There's no need to worry. There's nothing that you really need to do. There's nothing about yourself you need to hide. Take off the mask and let the light shine on your innocent face. You've never done anything wrong. And there's no.
have long disappeared So just relax And go slow There's no need to hurry For there are no monsters chasing you Right here and right now, you can be at peace. Only love is all.